So here we're back with the third video in this series of quick tips. And this one is a little bit less this time. Uh, so we've got videos out there for eight tips and seven tips. This time we're doing six. And uh, without much more to say than that, let's hop right into them. Many of us are aware if we want to do a file open or a file merge, we would access those commands from the file menu and click on open or merge. But did you know you can access these functions by using your file explorer? So what I want to do here is open up a part and then merge in a fixture. So in my demo parts folder, I'm going to grab my part, drag and drop it into the graphics area and let go. And this will perform a file open. Now to perform a file merge, I'll go and select my fixture. This time I'll drag and drop and hold down the control key, let go of my mouse button, and this will perform a file merge. This merge menu is the same one you get by accessing the file merge option in which you can do your repositioning of fixtures during the merge process. Typically, if you wanna get a little bit extra graphic space on your screen, you can minimize this menu bar by clicking this arrow over here on the right. And then to get it back, obviously you click that same arrow and you're back where you started. There is a quicker way. So when we're on our menu items, we can select a menu, double click, it will minimize, double click again, and it will maximize. An often forgotten about, but a very useful selection type is the alt click selection method. So for example, I'm gonna hop into an OptiRough here. And what I wanna do is select just the faces, just the, the radius faces around this feature right here. So looking at our selection methods here, we've got a shift click to select tangent faces. And if I try that, you're gonna see I get a lot of noise in there that I don't want. We could try some of these other methods, control clicking. So let's try control click and we get some of it, but not all of it. So we've got to do some more clicking. And even with some more clicking, we're not quite getting what we're after. So let's just try something different. We've got a control shift click. So let's go ahead and try that one now. And again, not quite the results that we're after. So this is where this alt click can come in handy and save you from having to click on every single one of these faces one by one. The alt click will give us the vector select method. So what that does is when I go ahead and click on alt and when I first left click, notice I start to create a line. Anything this line passes through and touches will be included in my selection. So I can left click again and start obviously changing the direction of this selection line. So I go right down and even zoom in on this last surface here right to there. And when I'm done selecting, so I've still, I'm still active and I'm still holding my alt key. I just let go of your alt key and everything in there is selected. And not only can you use this in your face selections inside of your toolpaths, but you can also use this inside of wireframe selection for when you're doing geometry manipulation or copying and translating and all that sort of fun stuff. So alt click for vector selection. Next up, we're talking about importing and exporting levels. In this example, I'm going to import a solid model, then head over to my levels manager and start adding some levels that I find useful in organizing my file. And once I have my levels set and my items put on each level, instead of having to redo the level naming process for each and every file, I can easily import these levels into new or existing files. To first export our levels, we're going to right click and head down to export named levels. Save this in a known location and notice the file type, a CSV file. Now when I open up my next file, I have two options to import our named levels. I can right click in the levels manager and go down to import and browse for the file location. Or using my Windows Explorer, I can drag and drop the CSV file onto the levels manager. Not only is this useful for importing and exporting named levels, but with this file extension CSV, we can open this file in Excel. And within Excel, we'll have access to more options into quickly creating level names. The layout in Excel is going to be our column A is our actual numbered level. B is the name of the level and C is the level set. So if I resave this out, re-import, notice we've got all the new named levels. If you want to repeat a function you just performed, you can use the space bar to launch into that function. Now, this function can be anything from a drilling operation. Let's say we drill this hole over here and exit out. If we wanted to do a drilling operation again, 
simply push the space bar, we're brought right back into drill. So this not only works with tool pass, but it works with your wireframe functions as well. We can do a curve on one edge right over here. Uh, green check out of the function. Space bar brings us right back into curve on edge once again. So this works for transforming wireframe functions, tool path selection, etc. So space bar to launch the last function you just performed. Using a function called temporary midpoints can save you some extra steps in geometry creation. So for example, let's say I have this part here and I want to create a piece of uh, wireframe geometry going down the middle of the slot. Uh, previously, what you would have to do is go ahead and create a line maybe from here to here and the same thing on the opposite side from there to there and then drawing a line between the two. I can use the midpoint of that line as an anchor and connect to the midpoint of the other line. With temporary midpoints, we can skip over that temporary geometry creation and just hover over the first point until we see the green dot. Hover over the second point until we see the green dot and we automatically are given that midpoint between the two selected items. So I'll do the same on the opposite side. Hover until I see the green dot. Hover until I see the green dot and click. And now I've created a line exactly in the middle of this slot without having to create any extra geometry. One thing to be aware of with the temporary midpoints, you do have to hover for a set amount of time. And that time is controlled down here in your temporary midpoints delay. So you can choose the amount of delay you would like to have and save that to your config file. If you did miss the first two videos in this series, I'll have some links uh, either here or here or down over there or somewhere around this video where you can uh, uh, click on and go and see those other two videos.